Good evening, everyone. My name is Dr. Susan Fennick. I am the CEO and founder of Juvenile Justice Impact. I hope you're all doing well this evening. We have the distinct honor and privilege to have with us tonight Cynthia Pataro, a minister, author, keynote speaker, and she's going to be telling us some compelling stories after the deaths of her two children, then her husband two years later, faced with terminal cancer diagnosis, all within a four-year period. Cynthia took her pain to the streets, ministering to grieving parents, widows, and friends who have lost children and family tragically from un untimely deaths. First and foremost, thank you for coming to this uh, to our podcast this evening, and I can't express enough my condolences. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. I, I really love having... You have me on because uh, we need to get the message out to people that there is hope in a hurting world because our world is really hurting right now, you think? Yes. <laughs> Tragically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So usually I just start with just telling everybody that, uh, yeah, I had a, in 2011, starting in March, my son was murdered. Uh, two months later, they caught his uh, his killer, and then six months after that, my daughter was killed on an ATV accident up in Bryan Head, Utah. I was the first, uh, other than the people that were there, uh, witnessed it. The first, then the first one there before any of the responders, before the fire department, before the ambulance, and then along came the morgue. So I found her dead body in the road. And then uh, I was diagnosed nine months later with colon cancer, and they told me I had six months to live. And I fought that battle and proved them all wrong, obviously. And then Thank God. That, was in, that was in May of uh, 2012. And then October 2012, my husband was diagnosed with a uh, tumor in a sinus cavity and he passed away Thanksgiving Day 2014 and then after that I kind of thought oh my gosh you know how am I going to start again what am I going to do and then two weeks after he died the district attorney's office called me and asked me uh, if they could speak to my husband I informed them that he was gone from us and they asked me who was going to represent my son at the murder trial, and of course I told him I was. So I had to sit through 10 days of a brutal murder trial, sit back watching the back of my son's murderer's head, which was, was quite difficult to sit through for 10 days, 8 hours a day. And so that's just the start of my testimony. So from there on in, I... I just started blogging, I started writing, I started ministering to people. I am a faithful uh, woman. I have deep faith in God, and, and he took me through the journey of something that I will never get over, and that people that lose children never get over. I'm so sorry. So, I mean, I, I can't. Where, where, do you, where do you draw your strength from? Uh, the Word of God and uh, friends, family, uh, my, my, my surviving children. I have five grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I have a brand new seven-month-old baby who, who's a happy pill. Uh -huh. And, you know, just it's, it's life. And life does go on, move on, but it's how we choose to handle it, and my way to handle it was in to help others, because I knew from the start of that journey what they were going to face and what they were going to go through, and in speaking to me about it, a lot of people have said, well, you really opened up my eyes and given me hope to be able to walk this journey and, and how to do it, and, and so I have a... I have a group that we meet once a month on a regular basis, and we, you know, we cry, we laugh, we have a glass of wine, and, you know, we just, uh, we bond in a way that 
is no other. It's what the heart knows and understands. Can you tell us a little bit about your family and how they were able to come together after these incredible tragedies? Well, my uh, older daughter lives in Washington, D.C., so she left town. She has three children. She's busy. Uh, She had a really hard time uh, between my kids and then her father, and then she went through a bad divorce, so she kind of numbed down. Mm Mm-hmm. But she's still very open to talk to me, which I appreciate. She just, uh, she's got her guard up pretty good. And then my older son, he shut down and didn't speak about anything regarding his brother and sister and father for eight years. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, and so one day he called me up on my son's, uh, thirty would have been his 31st birthday, March 25th, and he said, Mom, he goes, Will you have a beer with me? Because that's what they did. That was their thing. Is they have a beer together. Mm-hmm. So he he asked me if I would go have a beer, and I said, of course. So it was the first time that he actually spoke about his siblings and his dad. So I was very happy to have that open. And then my other son, my youngest son, and his wife, they're very faithful kids. My, my son, because of what happened... He just, uh, last year, he graduated at UNLV with a bachelor in psychology. So he, right now, is a football coach, and he actually coaches and ministers to young kids. Oh, nice. And he's been with me to a few functions and has spoken to uh, the youth and to kids. And, yeah, so he's doing very well. And so we're a very close-knit, supportive family. You know, we get together a lot. We have dinners together. Of course, I cook and they come here. And, yeah, so, you know, we kind of have moved on from all the trauma, and now we are more into helping others to to walk through that journey. And you had mentioned earlier that you you turn hope to the hurting. That's very impactful. That's very powerful. Well, when you look at somebody, and I will tell you, and I write about her in my book, there was a gal before my ch- children had passed away. The year He passed away the year before, 15 years old from cancer, which is unheard of in this, you know, today's society. Mm-hmm. But um, she reached out to me and was very timid and shy to do it, but she was she was willing, so willing to help me that she called me. She she got my phone number through some friends of friends, and so we had this conversation that lasted almost three hours, and I just felt like this burden of life lifted from me that I felt like I wasn't alone. And so with that, I said, you know what? <laughs> Not even maybe a month and a half after my daughter died, one of my uh, friend, one of my children's classmates from Faith Lutheran, he died of a traffic accident, uh, rolled his truck over, and then two weeks later, another friend of a friend lost her son uh, to at a party. Long story, and so that's where I began. That's where I started with two individuals that I could reach out to. And now my base, after 10 years, is over 500 families. That's incredible. I mean, think of, think of how you're changing their lives and the support that they didn't know that was even available until you came into their lives, you know? Well, that and uh, I've had people comment on my blogs in my book that are from all around the world and that's where I feel like Amazon is a blessing you know because you can get the word out there you can bring hope to the hurting and also to thank people like you that are doing these podcasts to reach people that say 
they feel alone. And, and right now during the holiday season, it is such a difficult time yeah. when it should be a joyous time. And, you know, here, all this that happened in Kentucky, I've got some feelers out to reach out to some families there. And so, you know, it just doesn't stop with you. You know, there's so much more to life. And I believe that, you know, God will take our mess and make a message and our test of life and make it our testimony if we allow it. And there's so many people that, that had they not otherwise met you, probably would have been in a completely different situation. So you're, you're like this, uh, you're like an earth angel almost helping, helping so many people get through similar, similar tragedies. Well, like I said, I have people that help me too. I have an incredible counselor who's now my friend and I just, you know, there's, God will surround you with the people you need when you're open to receive it. Oh, I couldn't agree and more. I, yeah. May I, may I ask, what was the motive with, with your son? Did you ever get to speak to the person who took yes. his life? Yes. Um, actually, uh, I'll just briefly tell you about that. When I did get to the trial, um, his cousin came up to me and told me how sorry he was for what happened. And if, you know, Brandon is his name, if he was guilty, then he deserves what he gets. And it just took away this animosity <clears throat> that I think was going on the four years before with all the postponements. Mm -hmm. And so in any event, I, I just kind of felt like, okay, like this is going to be okay. And we went through the trial. I sat through a lot of it. I had an advocate that would take me out of the room when it, when it was something that I shouldn't witness or want to see. Uh, but I would say 90% of the trial I sat through and I watched and I listened. And sometimes I was angry. Sometimes I cried. Sometimes I ran out of the courtroom crying. But one thing I do know is that <clears throat> there was a spiritual sense around me that was unbelievable. Like I could feel myself sitting in that chair, but my body, my spirit wasn't there. It was watching from afar. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was unexplainable, actually. So in any event, I, uh, we went through the trial, and then I was going for the, the sentencing on day, whatever the sentencing date was. And so I, I was sitting at my makeup mirror, and I was putting on some makeup, and I started to feel this sense of, oh, my gosh, like if I'm going to be a Christian woman and I'm going to follow Christ who died and forgave me, then why am I not forgiving this kid for what he did, the act of violence? And the only reason he did it, he was high, he needed a car, and my son was sitting in his car, and... The door was open, and he walked up, and he just started shooting him to death and threw him out of the car and took off with his car. So he was found guilty, and then we were going for the sentencing. And not only did God speak to me and say, forgive him, he asked me to go to the prosecutors and tell them to take away the death penalty because they were seeking the death penalty. And I had not even known anything about the death penalty at that point. It wasn't until years later I started learning more about what happened and what I did. And so what happens when the death penalty is removed, and by the way, after a few words back and forth with the prosecutor, he agreed and succumbed to uh, going for life in prison. So... In any event, they did that. They took away the death penalty. And I'd love to give you a copy of my book, Susan. You can kind of understand a little more of 
of the details of the trial because you're there and you've done that with the forensics and I have so much respect for what you and so many others do to solve these cases or victims of crime that we don't have a clue behind the scenes what is going on with the blood analysis and the you know the, the, the tools that are used to commit these violent murders so in any event i um i got to speak to the court his family uh they were crying so that in itself left the jury to go away and i didn't know that 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 would happen and which was a godsend i think because the judge then now steps in and she determines what the sentence is going to be so he ultimately got life in prison with a chance of parole in 28 years he had already served four of those years so he'll be maybe getting out if he's when he's around 57 I doubt at that time that he's going to be the same person he was going in. So hopefully, you know, he'll become a member of society and help other young people make better choices with their life because, you know, he didn't come from a family of wealth. You know, he lived in the not so great part of town. I'm not going to put any part of town back because family's family no matter where you live exactly. but he was involved in some heavy, heavy duty crimes prior to committing murder so he's he's away he asked me to forgive him I was able to speak to him and his family and to the court and that brought me more closure than if he had gone to where they put people on death row because on death row, they have the opportunity to, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, to postpone their death sentence. And in Nevada, they, don't, they haven't executed anybody since 2006. So now it's been 15 years, and they say they don't do it because they can't get the drugs to do it, which... I, from a lot of research, I find that to be not the case. And so between the years 1863 and 2006, that's 143 years, there was only 71 people executed here in Nevada. And so there's people sitting on death row that we are paying per inmate. There's 76 in, on death row right now. We are paying $90,000 a year for that inmate to be on death row. Per inmate. And that is, pardon? Per inmate. Per inmate. Yeah. Per inmate, yes. But that's not including the postponements, the court fees, the attorney fees. That's just to house them. Uh, however they feed and house them. And if you put them in regular prison as an inmate, it's uh, approximately anywhere from twenty five to 30000 a year. So my thing is, okay, the death penalty is the death penalty. Why does everybody have to go on death row and not be executed? I don't understand All that right. thinking. And I personally don't believe in the death penalty, but that doesn't mean that it's not okay for somebody else to believe in it. You know, believe in, you have the freedom to believe and choose what you would like. But to, you know, the money part of it is us taxpayers paying these bills. We, if for a state, we pay these bills. And so I'm advocating right now against the death penalty. I was on the, uh, uh, the panel to speak to them when they passed the bill to remove the penalty, which Sisolak overturned, he vetoed it. And so now I'm the advocate to, for the next session, but also the victims of crime that are the ones that are left with the devastation of their loved one gone. And a lot of these people are the breadwinners of the family. 
They are uh, children that still have a life, and their parents are never going to have that life with them, or have a wife, or a baby, or a child, or get married, or go to college, or whatever. I mean, these are youth that are dying. And so the state gives each member of a family a thousand dollars for counseling. Now, Susan, how much counseling does a thousand dollars cover? Not much. <laughs> at all. I mean, it's Not ridiculous. Much at all. They don't get money for funeral expenses. You know, they're 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 setting up these GoFundMe accounts. And GoFundMe is now a multi-billion dollar corporation. Yeah. I mean, and so these burial costs and these families that are so devastated, not only for the loss of their loved one, how they die tragically, whether it's through, you know, a drunk driver, whether it's through a gun, whether it's through a beating, whether it's through an act of violence like they're doing right now in the cities with all this uh Looting. Ugh, it's and, unbelievable. You know, it's, yeah, it's like I can't wrap my head around the money part of it, too, where this money can be going to these families that are so devastated, they don't know what they're going to do with the kids that are surviving, if they can clothe them to get them to school, if they can feed them. And these kids are scared without their father or their mother. Of course. And some of these kids, some of these kids, even end up. I talked to one of the kids. Um, both of his parents. He was homeless because I, I, I was very involved in homeless ministry before my kids were, uh, were gone. And this one kid said to me, he said, "You know what? I don't have a mom and a dad." They were both murdered, and here he is living on the street. And I'm like, okay, we're gonna. I'm gonna take you somewhere. So I took him to one of the the housing facilities, and he got a shower, and he got a meal, and he got uh, in, integrated into the system where he was just lost and alone. He didn't even have like a foster place to go. But there are resources out there that we can we can share with people and teach people like this is where you can go this is where you can get help and that's that's where my heart is right now and advocating for that and I'm you know I'm backing some people politically that are gonna stand behind this stuff and so I'm a blessed woman right now I feel like uh, God put me in a place where I can you know help the, the living as well it's incredible. I mean, you're you're blessed to to show other people that there could be blessings in their lives completely unexpected. Like the boy. I mean, homelessness and youth is is such a is such a such a problem that it is and it's so often not spoken about. Well, and there's an organization here on town. I was on the advisory board for about 5 or 6 years. It's called Project 150. And they clothe and help uh, homeless and uh, disadvantaged teens stay in high school. I've heard of them. And then, yeah. And, and then we, yeah. And then we have a scholarship program that helps put them, keep them in college. So we have a lot of uh, businesses here in town that support that and support us. But I've been involved in so many things, and then I wrote my book, and I got busy, and so I'm not involved in that, but I still take my... We have a function that uh, we hosted with uh, Zappos. Okay. And, yeah, we would uh, make sure that about anywhere from fifteen to 1,700 students went to prom. So we have a, we have a day called Prom Closet. And they go downtown, it's always in March, and they pick out clothes, jewelry, shoes, they can get their hair done, their makeup done, and their nails done. I mean, it's just a wonderful thing. We get them tickets and, and gift cards for restaurants, we buy their tickets for prom, and it's a wonderful organization, Susan, and I will connect you with that for sure. 
Oh, thank and, you. yeah, it's just a, we give them backpacks, uh, they're everything they need for school, and they, they come once a month, actually, they come in once a month, and they can shop. And it's, it's so heartwarming to see most of these kids bring back the clothes that they had for the month. Really? So they can pass it, they can pass it on to somebody else. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, yeah, there are programs out there that people don't know that, you know, are there for the community. And it's a, it's a wonderful thing because I believe Nevada is especially, well, I've been here 37 years. I, it's just a place of community, and community comes out and helps when somebody's in need. And I can't tell you the blessings that surrounded me during a time of such devastation where people would come and clean, clean my house. Are you there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm here. Oh, I'm sorry. My, my, my uh, thing beat. Oh. Anyway, I don't know if it's gone dead, but I can just switch on speaker. But anyway, I, um, I, I was just so blessed. I had meals coming to the house. People that would just come and sit. Okay, let me put it on. Okay, can you hear me now? Oh yeah, I could always hear you. That's a little okay. bit. That's a little bit more clear. <laughs> oh, okay, good. Anyway, I charged them. I don't know why they went dead, but I uh, yeah. So it, it, there's always a way to bless somebody when they're going through something. There's always a resource. There's always somebody that'll be there to give, and I find that a lot of people. <clears throat> want to give they want to do and you know if you don't have money to give uh it's okay you take a meal send a card if you pray pray for the family if you have resources help share those resources you know there's so much you can do for somebody that's going through tragedy instead of you know turning off the tv and say that that'll never happen to me I think it would be a good idea to have like links on my website to facil or to programs such as Project 150, and that's one thing that that I'm working on right now is is making some updates. And you know, I've spoken to Safe Nest, and of course, you know, St. Jude's Ranch for Children, and so many countless others, and. What I what I would like to do is have those links or have have that contact information available on the website so people can be like, well, you know, geez, I never you know knew of these resources, so they can right. so they can be you know just raise a level of awareness and maybe we can even talk to Project One Hundred and Fifty, and maybe it could be me, you, and and the the people that work at Project One Hundred and Fifty, and you know we can get back on the podcast and have like a round table discussion of what they do, how they do it, why they do it, who they serve, and really get the awareness out there of, of what great things they're doing in our community, what you've done, what we're all doing, and how we're coming together to make a difference. That'd be great. And I am there I'm still very dear friends with the founders. Oh good. Like I said, I do support the organization. I just don't sit on the advisory board anymore. Mm-hmm. You have no. to choose your, your, you know, how much you could take on your plate. This is for sure. <laughs> <laughs> because at the end of the day, you're like, all right, how many, you know, how many, uh, how many hours of sleep am I getting here? <laughs> right. um, but no, I would, I would love to meet them and it'd be an honor to meet them. And, you know, like I said, I think it'd be a great idea if we all came back on and give them the opportunity to, you know, discuss what they're doing and, and really, uh, get it out there. And, you know, we can blast, we can blast that out through our social media contacts and, and really let people know. I mean, I'm thinking, you know, maybe it'd be a good idea to contact some schools and give them the information as well of, of what we're all doing. And there's some, there's, there's so many times that there's, there's, uh, programs out there that, a, a person would dream of having the accessibility to that they just don't know about. You know, yeah. I mean, like Project One, like Project One Hundred and Fifty, and you know, they could be like, 
God, this is everything I've been hoping to to have access to in my life, and they just they just if you don't know what's out there, you're never going to be able to utilize it, right? I mean, well, the, we are in all the high schools, and the counselors all know who needs us, and so we give them bus tickets. Oh, nice. We we give them school supplies. And we have also had a couple of businesses, and we need more, always need more. But we have a room that, see, there, there's kids that are homeless that don't have anywhere to go to have a computer and do their homework after school. Right. And so we have a room, and they cost about 25000 to put together. And so we always are looking for sponsors to you know, help with that. And I, I'll, let, I'll let Patrick... Uh, share a little bit more about that. He's, you know, he's one of the founders. And in any event, yes, yeah, so we are in all the schools. So the schools do know about us. And we we take them food to the schools. So in that room, they have snacks and something to drink and, and they can take it wherever they're going. So, and, the, and I can't tell you how many, how many kids that I have, uh, I've sponsored a few to go to college, and it's just, I want to bring them home. I, I want to, you know, say, hey, you know, can you come spend the weekend with me? But we're not allowed. Hmm. We are not allowed to bring homeless kids into our home. That's too bad. I mean, I, I understand the logistics and the legalities behind it, but at the but at the same time, you feel a bond with these kids, I'm sure, that you know, you you see how big their heart is and, and what they want to achieve in the world and you have all the tools to give them and you want to just make them feel protected, right? Exactly, yeah. So that's another thing. And, you know, some of these kids end up dead, Susan. I know, I know. You know, they they uh, I'm, I'm thinking about it right now, freezing out there, you know, in the rain. and And, you know, and then during the holidays, they have nowhere to go. So we've had, you know, auditoriums that have opened up, you know, during the day that they can go to. But then at night, they can't, I don't know why they can't spend the night. It just doesn't make sense to me. So some of these rules and laws maybe need to change. And maybe people that are on these committees and are part of the organization, we could be like foster, you know, fostering people. Because once you go through the foster program, you can have kids in your house. Oh, nice. And, and if you look at some of the statistics, I mean, each year it's estimated that there's a 4.2 million youth and young adults that are homeless. And 700,000, these are just some statistics, 700,000 are un- unaccompanied minors. Right. That's a lot. 4.2 million? Yep. And I will tell you that just in our high schools alone, uh, we have over, I think now it's up to fit, over 15,000 in our program, in the Project 150 program. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the numbers are just, they're just, in, they're, they're unimaginable. I mean, how did they get to be this high and what 4.2 million youth? And that, right. that's just... It's just like you. How do you wrap your head around that number? And then you think, what can I do to make a difference? But we are all making a difference, and every every youth counts, and every effort counts. Right, and you know, all lives matter. And you know, I think about uh, the people that served our country, the veterans that are out in the street. Mm-hmm. Arnold Stock is doing such an incredible incredible just ministry for veterans and getting them off the street and it's it you know watching veterans in wheelchairs living homelessly it's it's there's so much out there that can be done and we can we can do it one day at a time but just to do it you know get out there and make a difference is what i tell people that are feeling low and lonely because when you help somebody and bring hope to them. You know, take them a cup of coffee, take them a, a Big Mac or, you know, breakfast sandwich. You know, give them a $5 gift card to McDonald's. Just, you know, something. 
you know, it just, it, it does make a difference. It does. No, I know. I remember um, I was at uh, the Walgreens here down the street, and there was a a woman, and she had what looked like about a three year old and a and a baby in a double carriage, and you could tell that she was just getting you know food supplies, nothing extravagant. She wasn't buying any candy or soda. She was buying like what looked like necessity foods, and um, you know like milk and bread and these type of items. And she kept swiping all of her cards, and they weren't working. And I just swiped my card. And she looked at me half crazy, like, like, <laughs> like, did you just do that? Like, what am I gonna? Is something gonna happen because you just did it? You know? And uh, she just started to cry. And I said, you know what? We we've all been there. You know, where where we've had some misfortunate, you know, times in our lives, and. And the cashier that that I've known, because <laughs> I'm always running in the Walgreens for something, and um, she was like, "Susan, that was just that was that, that was that was just great," and and that was it. I never knew her name. We never exchanged numbers, and she just went on with her with her night, and you know, it was about forty five dollars. And I thought to myself, you know, at the end of the day, you know, that that made an, an entire difference for her night her week maybe even her month how about hope and humanity yeah yeah and i just that was the least i could do you know and i just went to bed and thank god and thank the universe for giving me the opportunity to have the means to to help to help someone yeah i agree i actually did the same exact thing about three weeks ago in target there was a military gal and you could tell by what she was buying she was stretching you know you could just tell right right and so i picked up a gift card and i bought a 50 dollar gift card because i was in front of her and i gave it to the cashier and i said i want you to use this for the lady in uniform and i just walked out never saw her never said a word just yeah. said God blessed you, and he blessed me by being able to bless you. Exactly. So, you know, people can do that all day long, even if it's $5, you know. It, you see, like, a homeless person buying something in, uh, you know, a grocery line. I just, you know, here, take my card. I'm going to buy, your, I'm gonna buy your, your meal there. Just, you know, you could, anybody can do that. You know, give up your five dollars somewhere else and if it just blesses you you won't believe how it'll bless you more than it'll bless their socks off oh for sure i mean what we think about you know spending money on expensive coffees (laughs) could could mean the difference for for someone's entire day exactly and not to minimize by any means and and um you know, it, these times are tough, and especially with the, the COVID and so many people losing their jobs, losing their friends, right. losing their family, losing everything. And, you know, I just always think it back in the back of my mind that it could be any one of us any any minute. You know, we it could be any one of us, you know. Yep. And, and I just have always, you know, just was raised to be an honest and caring and appreciative person and, to always give back and so I've, I've always lived that way well you are living it because <laughs> you are you are a beacon of light in a lost world you doing your what you're doing in all areas your your work and your passion for your work and your passion for people I mean you don't have passion for people and do this kind of podcast you know you you've got such such passion and I love that and I was like I gotta tell you just real quick I wasn't supposed to be at Candy's party I had a I had I I you were there because you were meant to come on the podcast no (laughs) you were meant to come on and and share your 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 incredible incredible story and you know people I always feel like people People meet for a reason. Little disclaimer: Candy is one of our very, 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 very true, true friends, and um, 
and we were there for her birthday party, and, and that's how we met, and we just so happened to bump into each other and get talking about her book and what I've been doing for the past, especially 22 years, and um, we said, I said, hey, wait a minute, I says, I would love to have you on my podcast to 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 talk about everything that you've experienced and what you're doing in your life and how you're how you're impacting other people's lives and let's just make this happen and then here we are. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, I was at another Christmas function before that and there was about 1,500 people oh. and I loved it. <laughs> work and it was for My Vegas Magazine because I was on the cover last year. Oh, right, right, right. You and I, you and I exchanged uh, stories. I, I think I was on the cover, was it last year? Yeah, it was, yeah. It was last year, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, well, here we were both on the cover. And then I said, you know what? I really got to go honor Candy. I've I've known Candy thirty seven years. Love her. You know, she's just fun and she's sweet, and I love her heart. And I had her and some of the gals over for dinner the other night, and we had a really nice, you know, little friendship time. So anyway, I'm just grateful that I think I saw that posted somewhere. And I was like, hey, it's like you're having a great time. <laughs> I haven't seen that yet, but anyway, I got to get better at social media. I'm so bad oh, at you're it. You're telling me. <laughs> yeah. When anyone sees anything posted, I get a call and they're like, who's doing this for you? Yeah. <laughs> so, well, who's doing it is someone, someone who knows how to do it, not me. <laughs> There's a lot to it. There's a lot to it. You know, the posting and the hashtags and the, 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 the photos. And thank you so much for your photos of, of both of your children. And, and what I'm going to do is uh, I'll when we conclude this podcast, what I'll do is I'll incorporate that photo and then we'll upload it on our social media. And then I'll email you the, uh, the link and, and, okay. and we can send it out. And that's one thing I was going to ask, is, is there a way for people to, where, where can people find your, where can people find your website, where can people find your book, how can people get a hold of you? Tell my book, uh, on my site, CynthiaPortero.com, and it's also on Amazon. Uh, the one on Amazon they're selling right now is the the unrevised version, I revised some of the mistakes I didn't like in the first edition. So, um, but because so I, I'll send them out for people that, that want the more revised version. So I'm try, I'm trying to work with Amazon. It's another job that I have to do because it's a lot of work. But those are the two areas. And then on Facebook, I am official Cynthia Portero. I am, I've got a blog on A Time to Heal and my uh, group, Morning Hope of Las Vegas. That's on, that's on Facebook. You're, I'm also, I'm the, also on, the official Cynthia Otero, that's on, that, it, so it starts with official Cynthia? That's on Facebook, yeah. Oh, okay. And the same thing with Instagram. Okay. And I'm now just, my son's now just, teaching me how to do TikTok oh so God. I can you're getting like, into you're getting deep into it you're going all out that's good that's good it is it is a lot of work I mean the the posting the just everything everything consistency sharing tagging <laughs> all of that yeah but it, it's worth it because you know I mean we want to we want to get we want to get our important work out there right exactly yeah I was even considering you know doing a podcast so one of these days you can teach me how okay <laughs> well I, I I get a lot of help uh don't so don't don't be all impressed with uh thinking <laughs> thinking I'm doing this by myself yeah <laughs> I'll, I'll, Thinking about that higher that higher word, I got to hire somebody to help me. It's it's a it's a it's a full time job. I have uh, Ulysses Pisa who has been helping me with this, and uh, sometimes when I, I see what he's he's going through, you know, 
going through both computers and typing this and uploading this and that and everything else. And I'm like, okay, so when you're done with that, I'll just be right back. <laughs> well, I, I just pray that God will bless you abundantly. And as you serve in what you're doing, the community around the world and your work, I just pray that he would open your eyes and your ears and things that will open doors that no man can shut. Thank you. I really appreciate that. You're, you're, you're a walking earth angel. You're inspirational. You're a mentor. You're, you're a beautiful friend, a beautiful mother. You're just, you're, you're just such a, you're such a bright light and, and, we're blessed to all have you in our lives, and and I love that that you are so close to Candy because I consider her one of my my very close friends as well, and and that means so much, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, you got to have friends, that's for sure. They are so important. That's what we were just talking about the other night. You know, yeah. pick night is important. So the next time we have a get together, you'll have to join us. I'd love to. Yeah, for sure. Well, I um, if anyone out there would like to reach me, uh, I can be reached at juvenilejusticeimpact at gmail.com, or you can check us out at www.impactjji.com. We're going through some revisions right now, and you can also give us a call at 888-JJI-0010, and please consider donating because that's how we're having the impact on our community is through these different uh, sponsors that definitely help us do what we do. Cynthia, thank you so much for, for taking the, the time out of your, your busy schedule and your night, your evening. And, um, it's uh, cold and raining out. It looks like it almost might be snowing. So I would advise to stay in with the fireplace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's where I'm headed right now. So thank you so much, Susan, and and God bless God bless your audience listening as well. Yeah, you too. Thank you so much, and uh, we'll be in touch. And I'll definitely look forward to coming to one of your get-togethers. Okay, thank Talk you so. Much. Think. Oh wait, and um, do do we have your email? Uh, you you should. It's on my card. Okay, do I meant for like the 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 listeners? Oh. Okay, it's uh, my email. I have so many. It's Cynthia A. Dot Portero, P O R T A R O, at gmail.com. So there are two A's after Cynthia Dot Portero. C Y N T H I A A, period, P O R T A R O, at gmail.com. Correct. Wonderful. Okay, well, thank you again. It's been an honor, um, and we'll look forward to speaking with you perhaps in the future when we sit down with Project 150. Yep, I'll, I'll put that together. I know they would love it. Yeah, we'll maybe Yeah, maybe we can do it sometime next week or <laughs> yeah, something. The holidays would be perfect, yeah. Oh, yeah, and then they can talk about what they're doing in the community and raise a level yep. of awareness of where they might have some workshops or where they might be having uh, some drives going on yeah. within the community, and then we can blast that out to all of our, our social media friends, and then that will raise a level of awareness so more people know who they are, what they're doing, and where we can find them. <laughs> yeah, and there are donation drops around the city. Okay. Yeah, you can go on project150.org, and it will show where they are, and it will also give you an idea of what they do. Wonderful. Well, we're all, all, right. all going to check it out. Thank you again, and we'll talk offline, and we'll figure out how we're going to get together with Project 150 and, and when we're going to uh, all get together as friends. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.